through many Disney bingings, I've realized the magic carpet is all over Disney movies. I mean, he's in Aladdin, of course. And there's a carpet in Moana that looks very similar to the one in Aladdin. And finally, there he is again in Princess and the Frog. John Clements and Ron Musker put the magic carpet in so many of their movies, so at the end of today's binge watching, I decided I think I feel a theory coming on. So let's jump right into it. Yes, I did just teleport. Hello, I'm Isaac from Wanso Videos, where we discuss fun topics for fun people, and today I'm gonna use the references, canon, and Easter eggs of the magic carpet to determine his epic story. Our first encounter with the magic carpet occurred during the 1992 film of Aladdin. After Aladdin was tricked into voyaging into the Cave of Wonders in exchange for his freedom from prison, he came across the flying carpet in the cave. The magic carpet was shy at first, but plays a little prank on Aladdin's monkey Abu to get his attention. Once Aladdin realizes the carpet is there and asks for the magic carpet's help, it's ecstatic and is instantly willing to help someone friendly. Aladdin finds the treasure he was looking for, which appears to be nothing more than a lamp, except it definitely wasn't. This was the vessel of the genie of the lamp, who reveals to us important information for the basis of the magic carpet story. Yo, Rockman, haven't seen you in a few millennia. Now we know at some point the magic carpet found friendship with the genie, and more importantly, the magic carpet has an extremely long life, possibly even an endless life. We don't know when the magic carpet will be no more, but we do know when its life began. According to Disney Astrology, carpet's birthday is November 7th. Now I'm not sure if this is indicating the day the carpet was weaved together or the day he gained human thoughts. I mean, carpets are pretty new to me, but I think I may know where he came from. The magic goes on for miles, the magic of the mystic isle. If you are familiar with my theories on the origins of the troll's crystals from Frozen and what trapped the genie in the magic lamp, then you'll be familiar with the place from the Disney Junior show Sophia the First. Sophia is a princess with an amulet capable of summoning any princess from throughout time, revealing her world is linked with all others in Disney canon. At one point, she even meets Princess Jasmine and our friend, the magic carpet. On one adventure, Sophia travels to the Mystic Isles, a conglomeration of floating islands, which this unicorn explains. If not for the magic here, there would be no magic anywhere. There are islands which are the origins for centaurs, dragons, and magic carpets. Yes, I believe on November 7th, many millennia ago, the magic carpet was created in the isles and traveled down to the earth below to learn about mankind and the world around him. One of his first adventures included meeting the genie, which created a lifetime friendship full of games. Can't believe it, I'm losing to a rug. And a sweet handshake. Yo, give me some tassel. <laughs> yo, yo. After some time, the genie and the magic carpet are separated, and during this separation without a master to serve, I think it makes sense the magic carpet would wander the world in search of meaning and adventure. I think the magic carpet traveled around and eventually came into contact with Moana's people, seen through their very similar sheet in the song How Far I'll Go. The carpet we know in Moana does not possess identical colors and designs to the magic carpet we are looking for, but they are close enough to suggest on one of the carpet's early trips around the world, he came across the people of Montanui, which could have mystified and excited them, leading them to create the carpet we see in Moana. Then at some point after coming into contact with the citizens of Montanui, the carpet discovers and becomes trapped within the Cave of Wonders. Maybe he was placed in there by visitors to the cave, or was forced to live within the cave when it was created. We can't say for certain because we don't know much about the cave itself. Originally, I always thought the magic carpet was a part of the forbidden treasure, which when touched destroys the cave, but the magic carpet interacts with Abu, with no consequences. The carpet wasn't treasure, it was a prisoner of the cave as much as the genie was a prisoner of the lamp. For an unknown amount of time, the magic carpet lives in the cave, but he is eventually discovered by Aladdin and Abu. This is where his canonical journey begins, and when some of his grandest adventures occur. By becoming friends with Aladdin, the magic carpet finds meaning serving him and doing everything in its power to protect and help Aladdin's companions. The carpet saves Aladdin from the crumbling cave, helps Aladdin to seduce Jasmine by showing her the world, and flies Aladdin back to Agrabah to defeat Jafar. 
When Jafar returns in the Aladdin sequel, the magic carpet shows up again to fearlessly fight off the genie version of Jafar, and he sticks by Aladdin's side throughout Aladdin the series, prepared for whatever came their way. In Aladdin's final film, Aladdin's father Kazim was openly disapproving of Aladdin owning a magic carpet and using it as a mode of transportation, believing it to be dangerous compared to the traditional choice of horses, showing us not everyone approved of the unexplainable magic that lived in the world. However, Aladdin nevertheless assures Carpet that his father will simply come around in time. By the end of the film, the magic carpet saves the lives of Aladdin and Chasm during the climactic showdown at the Disappearing Isle, which allows the magic carpet to prove himself for Aladdin's father. Carpet becomes integral to Aladdin and his friends' lives and can take on practically any task. Once he served as Jasmine's personal assistant, taking along with her on various royal events such as parades and openings in the bazaar, as well as making sure she keeps up with all of them. The carpet has also taken on other mythical creatures like when Carpet and Aladdin battled the Greek hero in training Hercules after they were fooled to believe he had kidnapped Abu. The magic carpet was able to rival Hercules' flying horse Pegasus. All this fun couldn't last forever though. The magic carpet was alive for thousands of years before Aladdin came to be, and he'd be around much longer once they inevitably had their ending. Much like when it left the genie for the first time, I think the magic carpet wandered the world again, and we do get to see where he ends up hundreds of years later. The magic carpet keeps transferring from master to master, and we end up seeing him in Princess and the Frog, dusted over a rail in New Orleans. Sure, we don't know the specifics of the magic carpet's life, but through all of his appearances, easter eggs, and canon, we have seen him to be a dedicated and loyal friend who has traveled all across the Disney universe. So now it's time for the question of the day, sponsored by my patrons. Do you think the magic carpet has been flying around the Disney universe for thousands of years? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section, along with any other ideas you have for future Discovering Disney episodes. If you enjoyed this video, then click that like button. If you'd like to stay up to date with new magical videos, then click that subscribe button and follow me on Twitter. And to see more Watso videos, then check out some awesome pics over there. Thanks for watching and have a magical day.